In this podcast, we're going to take a look at the epistles of the New Testament. Epistles, of course, are letters. Now, this is particularly important because the epistles make up a huge piece of the New Testament. They're um, arranged following the book of Acts, so that you have the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then the Gospel of John, followed by the book of Acts, which, of course, really is part two of the Gospel according to Luke. And then following this, you have the epistles. First of all, you have the 13 letters written by the Apostle Paul. Then you have a letter written by James. Then you have two letters written by Peter, three written by John, and one written by Jude. The earliest letter was probably written as early as 49 AD. Now this could well have been Paul's letter to the Galatians, or it might have been his letter to the Thessalonians. 49, 50, possibly as late as 51. It's a little hard to date them for sure, but it could have been that early. Now keep in mind that this is less than 20 years after the crucifixion of Jesus. The last letter was probably written around 95 AD and was probably one of the letters written by the Apostle John. Keep in mind that the epistles were the very first New Testament writings. Um, A number of these letters were known and in print and circulating before any of the Gospels were written. And so the epistles are really the earliest written documents that we have testifying to the story of Jesus and the conversion of the apostles and the work of the apostles and so on. The reason for the epistles is varied. Some of the letters were written to address specific problems that had arisen in some of the Christian churches. For example, the Apostle Paul wrote at least a couple, probably three or four, letters to the church in Corinth because the church in Corinth was having some serious problems. Um, There was a guy there who was living with his father's wife his stepmother or something like that. Um, There were people who denied the resurrection. There were people who were getting drunk at the worship services. Um, There were people who were taking each other to court. There were people who were standing up in worship services and jabbering away in tongues, and nobody knew what in the world they were saying. Uh, And Paul writes them a letter to straighten this stuff out. And when they didn't respond well to Paul's first letter, he wrote them a second letter rebuking them for not responding well to his first letter. So he is writing specifically to address some problems that he has learned of in the churches. A number of the the epistles are this way. For example, Galatians as well, where the Galatian church was having a controversy over the issue of circumcision and whether Christians had to be circumcised in, in order to be Christians and so on. Some of the letters were written for a second reason, and that is that they were actually letters responding to letters that had come from various churches asking questions about things. We know, for example, that Paul got a letter from the Corinthians asking about the issue of meat offered to idols. Another letter from the Corinthians mentioned, or perhaps the same letter from the Corinthians, mentioned the question, asked the question, what about marriage? I mean, considering the fact that time is short and Jesus is coming soon, you know, maybe we shouldn't get married at all. So Paul responds to the issues that are raised in the letters that they sent to him. Some of the epistles are personal letters to individuals. Paul, for example, writes a letter to a friend of his named Philemon uh, and uh, talks to him about um, a slave who had run away to Paul, and Paul wants Philemon to take him back and be kind to him. Paul writes a number of letters to some of his uh, comrades in the mission service, Timothy and Titus, for example. Um, At least one of John's letters appears to be a personal letter from John to a Christian believer. Some of the epistles are written for the purpose of laying out uh, clear teaching and helping the churches to get some stuff straight that they maybe um, weren't terribly straight on or just reminding them of some things that they should have known but want to be sure they don't forget. Uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians seems to be an example of that. There doesn't seem to be any particular problem going on in the church in Ephesus, but Paul wants to kind of re-summarize the gospel and lay it out for them so that they'll be reminded of it. 
Uh, at least one of the letters is a letter of introduction, essentially, and that's Paul's longest letter, his letter to the Romans. He had never been to Rome, but he wanted to come to Rome, and he wanted to meet them, and he was hoping that the Romans would have enough confidence in him to help him get on to Spain so he could preach the gospel there because the gospel had never yet been preached in Spain. So he writes this long letter to the Roman Christians telling them who he is and what he believes and what he's been up to in the hopes that it will help them to have confidence in him and uh, support him in his endeavor. When interpreting the epistles, it gets a little tricky because it's sort of like hearing the other side of a phone conversation. You know, you've probably had the experience of listening to somebody talking on the phone, and you can't hear what the other person is saying, but you can hear what this person's saying. And they're saying things like, really? No, you're kidding. He didn't. And then what? And you're thinking, what? What? What's going on on the other side of the conversation? Because I don't understand what's happening. I can only hear one side of the conversation. Well, that's sort of the way it is with the epistles. Um, you hear what Paul is saying to the Corinthians, but you don't hear what the Corinthians had said to Paul. Even though he alludes to the fact that they had written him a letter, we don't have that letter, so we don't know what all was in it. So we sort of have to read between the lines or uh, interpret what might be going on. And in order to do this, we really have to have a good understanding of context. What is the apostle saying and why is he saying it? And this means um, looking at the context of the various verses in their paragraph settings and in their larger chapter settings, sections, uh, headings, and so on. Um, you know, what, what is Paul doing in this section? Why is he discussing this issue at all? Where has his argument come from and where is his argument going? Um, what do previous chapters have to say and what do successive chapters have to say and how can we piece the argument together so that we can successfully read between the lines and understand what he's trying to say here. This means that we need to get the big view which means that we need to read the whole letter um, and this suggests that it would be a really good thing for us to read the letter over and over and over again as fast as we can so that we get familiar with the whole landscape, the whole picture, the beginning and the end, and the whole argument. Otherwise, we're liable to get lost in the trees and be so consumed with the bark and the tree leaves that we don't see the forest and how all of it fits together. So this business of getting the big view is especially important with the epistles, and there's only one way really to do it, and that is to become very familiar with the letters as wholes.